Today I have an advanced grammar quiz lesson for you. My name is Wes, this is Interactive English, the channel's all about trying to help you practice and improve your English, and today I want to work on your grammar skills. And this is actually a previous live lesson that I did a while ago, and all I've done is I've just shortened it. And so for some of you this may be review, and it's always good to review. For others, uh, if this is new, then that's perfect. You get to really work on your grammar. I'm going to ask you some different questions, and I will give you a moment to think about the answer, and then, of course, I will explain the answer to you and really give you a bit more detail as to why it is correct. So let's, well, let's just go ahead and start the quiz. With the first question that I have for you, which is this one right here. I get so mmm when I get the wrong answer. Which word best completes that sentence? Are you going to say A, frustrated, or B, frustrating? The correct answer is A. I get so frustrated when I get the wrong answer. Now, the reason this is confusing grammar. Many times learners may confuse ED and ING adjectives. So right down here, I gave you a little bit of an explanation. We use ED adjectives when we describe a feeling or an emotion, when you describe the way you feel about something. I'm frustrated. I'm confused. I'm bored. I'm tired. Those are ED adjectives that describe our feeling. We use ING adjectives when you are describing a person's character, a thing, or a situation. So for example, you'd say, well, I am excited. That's the way I feel. The movie is exciting, and we use that ing adjective. The next question I have for you is this one. What do you think? Which, which best completes the sentence? The phone is ringing. Mm, answer it. Would you say A, I'll, which is the contraction of I will, or B, I'm going to? The phone is ringing. I'll answer it. I will answer it. Now, you might be wondering, well, this, this is a slight difference between I will and I'm going to. When you're talking about a quick decision, something where there's not much time, you're going to use I will. Because when you use going to, it makes me think that there was kind of a plan to do this. But the truth is, you never know when the phone is going to ring. That is a slight difference between using will and going to. The next question is, I plan to go to school to mm, my education. Is it A, farther, or B, further? The answer is B. I plan to go to school to further my education. Now, when you think about the difference between farther and further, think of it this way, all right? Both refer to some kind of distance. We're talking about a distance. Farther refers to a physical distance, while further refers to a figurative distance. And in this case, you're talking about your education. You are going to go ahead, you are going to become more informed, you're going to get smarter, and you are going to move a distance, but you really don't know how far. There is no number that you're going to be able to assign to that distance, so it is a figurative distance, and you would use further. The next question, none of the bananas, mm, ripe. Which verb to be are you going to use to complete that sentence? None of the bananas, mm, ripe. Are you going to say is ripe or are ripe? The answer is B, are. None of the bananas are ripe, all right? The reason is because you're talking about none. It is an indefinite pronoun, but with this indefinite pronoun, it can be used with either a singular or plural verb. It depends on the noun to which, it's to which it refers. So for example, in this case, you're talking about bananas. None of the bananas. Bananas is a plural noun, so this is going to take a plural verb. Let's look at the next question. All right, so here we go. 
I had to throw out my mm, mm, mm. I'm giving three, three blanks, jersey, and get another one. I had to throw out my mm, 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 jersey, and get another one. I've given you three words here, three different adjectives. I want you to put them in order. So I gave you blue, basketball, and raggedy. Raggedy means something that is old and torn, and sometimes things have sentimental value and you don't want to get rid of them. This is all about adjective word order, which is another, which is another thing, part of grammar that can be a little confusing. Raggedy blue basketball jersey, which would be 312, all right? You're talking about, I had to throw out my raggedy blue basketball jersey and get another one. Usually, I think you're gonna find maybe just two or three adjectives used in a row. I think very rarely you're going to have four or more adjectives come before a noun. But if we're talking about order, this may vary depending on the site you're going to use, but most of the, this is pretty standard. I think you're going to do opinion, size, shape, condition, age, color, pattern, origin, material, purpose. So in this case, I'm talking about the condition first. Something is raggedy. The condition and then the color, which is blue, and then it's basically the purpose. It is a basketball jersey. That's what it is. Raggedy, blue, basketball jersey, which which is grammatically correct. Now we're getting into a little bit of punctuation. So we're talking about um, a dialogue, something that somebody says, all right? So you have four different sentences to choose from. Sentence number one, she said, I took the photo. Number two, the photo was taken by me, he said. Number three, I took the photo, he said. Or number four, the photo, she said, was taken by me which one is correct, but for this one, you really need to look at, look at those sentences and determine the correct punctuation. The correct answer is sentence number four. That is our winner, sentence number four. This is an example of a divided quote. It's not something that, you, you will see this if you're reading, people will take quotes and they will divide it. And the reason it's a divided quote, because I said, quote, the photo, he said, was taken by me. And again, this is written in the passive voice. The photo was taken by me, but I've divided the quote. You would have quotes on the first part, the photo, and you need that comma there. You need that comma. She said, comma, and then quotes, was taken by me. All right, let's look at the next one. So which one best completes the sentence? Which one best completes the sentence? We mm for the bus for over 20 minutes. Hopefully it'll arrive soon. Is it A, waited, B, have waited, or C, have been waiting? The answer is C. That is the, that is the one that will best complete the sentence. We have been waiting for the bus for over 20 minutes. Hopefully it'll arrive soon. You use the present perfect continuous to talk about a continuous action started in the past, it has continued to the present, and will likely continue into the future. I added that last part, hopefully it'll arrive soon, which basically means that you will still be waiting. You are still waiting right now. So it's talking about something that is happening an action that is continuous right now. So that is why the present perfect continuous, that is the correct answer for this question. The next one, are you ready? And this is something that I, I feel like learners confuse a lot, uh, especially in their writing. I wonder where mm, eat dinner tonight. Is it A, they will, or B, will they? The answer is A, they will. I wonder where they will eat dinner tonight. Now, the question that I would have for you, if, if you answered A and you answered correctly, I would then say why. Why do we say they will instead of will they? The reason that we use they, they will is because this is a noun clause. 
And a noun clause, all right, so if you don't know, it is a dependent clause, it acts as a noun. It has a subject, which is they, it has a verb, which is will. And often these clauses, if you want to identify them, they often begin with words such as how, that, what. So you need to have the subject and then follow it with the verb. They will eat. I think oftentimes when students might see this, they, they, they have where and they think question and then they want to switch the subject and the verb, but not in this case. Let's look at the next one. I suggest that everyone mm, are Saturday lessons. Which word completes that? This is confusing grammar. A, join, B, joins, or C, will join. The correct answer is A. I suggest that everyone join our Saturday lessons. Now, you may be looking at this and be like, wait a second, subject verb agreement, everyone joins. But in this case, I suggest that is talking about the subjunctive mood, a suggestion that somebody has. So in that case, I suggest that everyone join our Saturday live lessons. The subjunctive mood, it refers to a hypothetical situation in which you use the base form of the verb in the noun clause. So right there, we just talked about noun clauses. It's another noun clause. I suggest, and then that everyone joins our Saturday lessons, that is our noun clause. It starts with that, and then we have our subject, everyone, and our verb join. But it is the subjunctive, so we're going to say everyone join. Let's look at the next one. Okay, so this one, this is, <laughs> I'm sorry, you're looking at this like, oh goodness. I want you to first read this and tell me, how many mistakes do you see? How many mistakes? And I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you that they are all mistakes with prepositions because I can't, you can't do a gra confusing grammar lesson without talking about prepositions. So this is a great way to practice this. I have this little reading for you. I want you to say, how many mistakes with prepositions do you see? First, let's identify the mistakes. That's the first step in this process. So I'll just go ahead and read it for you. I'm gonna read it as is. A long time ago, I had a terrible flight experience leaving to New York. First, the flight was delayed from three hours. Many people complained over waiting was so long. A few hours later, everyone was told the plane was incapable at taking off. I had to wait until the next morning to leave. That was a long time ago. Now I can look back and laugh on it. If you're just listening to me read it, probably some of it sounds a bit awkward. So there are, there's actually quite a few mistakes with the prepositions. So the first thing I want you to do is just look at it, look at those prepositions and find, well, how many mistakes do you see? There are six mistakes with prepositions. I have highlighted those mistakes for you right here. All right, so now you can see the mistakes. Leaving to New York, it's a mistake. Delayed from three hours, mistake. Complained over waiting, mistake. Waiting with so long, mistake. Incapable at taking off, mistake. And laugh on it, mistake. Now what I want you to do is go through, all right, which is the correct preposition you should use? I want you to go through and Think about what should you change those prepositions to. Let's look through this together, okay? So, a long time ago, I had a terrible flight experience leaving from New York. Remember, you would travel to some place, but if you're leaving, you're going to leave from there. So you're leaving from New York. First, the flight was delayed by three hours. So something might be delayed by a certain amount of time, delayed by. Many people complained about waiting for so long. So you would complain about something. Now you could complain to someone if you're talking to a person. But in this case, we're not talking to a person, you're talking about you're complaining about the delay and you are complaining about waiting, or well, you're complaining about waiting for so long. You wait for a period of time. 
After a few hours, everyone was told the plane was incapable of taking off. You are incapable of doing something. I had to wait until the next morning to leave. That was a long time ago. Now I can look back and laugh about it. I hope that this grammar quiz, this little interactive quiz was helpful for you. That is what it's all about in order to practice your skills and actually talk about why the grammar is the way it is. So if you learn something new, if you enjoy this lesson, please hit that like button. Let me know. That is the way that you can let me know that, okay, in the future, we should do more grammar lessons.